Hello, and welcome to this online uh, symposium entitled As Easy as 123, Evidence-Based PCI in Patients at High Bleeding Risk, the Leaders Free Trials. My name is Keith Oldroyd. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Biosensors International. In this symposium, I'll be introducing Dr. Philip Urban, who will present the results of Leaders Free 1 and 2, and then Professor Franz Eberle, who will talk about Leaders Free 3. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Urban to give his presentation. Thank you, Keith. Hello, everyone. My name's Philip Urban. I'm a cardiologist in Geneva, Switzerland, and I'll go over some of the interesting data from the Leaders Free 1 and Leaders Free 2 trials that we've accumulated over the recent years. The device that was evaluated in both those trials is the BioFreedom stainless steel drug-coated stent. It's shown here. The struts are 120 micron in thickness, and there is a selectively microstructured surface on the abluminal side of the stent that holds the uh, drug without requiring a carrier or a polymer. The drug BA9 is particularly lipophilic, you can see here, far more so than serolimus, zodorolimus, or eberolimus, for instance. The advantage is when we considered this device in now nine years ago, was that, of course, there could be no polymer-related adverse events. The transfer of the drug to the vessel wall was relatively rapid. It's all over in a month. And we felt at the time that that would be a good fit with a short DAP course. The Leaders Free trial design that we conceived together with Biosensors and Cirque in Paris, it was a prospective double-blinded design with 2,400-plus patients at increased bleeding risk. And we compared the Biofreedom stainless steel DCS to the similar um, naked bare metal stent, the Gazelle. Everybody got one month DAPT only because of their bleeding risk. And there were two endpoints, a primary safety endpoint, cardiac death, MI, and stent thrombosis. And there was a primary efficacy endpoint, clinically driven TLR. The inclusion criteria are shown here. They were taken from the literature at the time. And those that were most frequently used were advanced age, need for oral anticoagulants, renal failure, planned major surgery, anemia or recent transfusion, and cancer. The endpoints, and I'm showing you the two-year data we have here published by Philippe Garraud, we found there was an advantage of the DCS over the bare metal stent in terms of safety, um, and the hazard ratio was 0.8. You can see it here, and it was well maintained out to two years. And there was a primary efficacy endpoint that showed a clear benefit of the DCS over the bare metal stent. When we looked at the subgroups at two years, it was quite clear that in none of the pre-specified subgroups, either for efficacy or for safety, was they a group that actually benefited from bare metal stents. So the DCS was better for everybody. A subgroup that was of particular interest were the patients who presented with myocardial infarction. There were a majority of non-STEMI, but there was over 100 of patients with STEMI. And again, this is the two-year data. And you can see that the similar results were obtained, only perhaps more marked for this subset, with the primary safety endpoint of cardiac death, MI, and ST, that was clearly better for the drug coated stent than the bare metal stent, essentially driven by less uh, myocardial infarction, and there was a clear benefit in terms of clinically driven TLR. The bleeding was uh, frequent in both groups and similar in both groups as expected. We don't have time to go over too much detail, but we did manage to have to date 11 publications from this data set, and there are a couple more coming in the pipeline. Leaders Free 2 was an important confirmation of the results of Leaders Free 1. Uh, 1,200 patients all received a drug-coated stent. They were randomized both in Europe and in the United States, um, and they were compared to the bare metal stent arm of Leaders Free 1 by propensity analysis. And essentially, it was important and interesting to see that we could reproduce the results of Leaders Free 1 uh, very, very precisely with a benefit for safety, a benefit for efficacy, and a very comparable incidence of BARC 3 or 5 bleeding. All of this was led by Mitch Krukoff, and these data have been published uh, or in press, pardon, with a, a circulation cardiovascular intervention. Has 
have the leaders free trials generated interest in the interventional community i think definitely so uh, we were the first to publish leaders free and there have been four published trials of stent versus stent in these patients with varying durations of um, um, anti-platelet treatment but all have met their pre-specified endpoints there are two important trials comparing duration of DAPT in these patients, one Chinese target safe, one um, European and uh, beyond master adapt. And we will hear from some of those results next year. And there is one trial that is also in the follow-up stage comparing a polyzine nanocoated stent to uh, second generation drug looting stents in patients on oral anticoagulants. So the field is moving fast and the interest is important. So in conclusion, Leaders Free demonstrated and Leaders Free 2 confirmed that the BA9 DCS is safer and more effective than a bare metal stent for these patients treated with ultra short DAPT of one month. Two year follow up of 2,400 plus patients and focused analysis on predefined subgroups have confirmed that these benefits are durable and apply to multiple patient subsets. And patients presenting with non-STEMI or STEMI appear to derive a particularly important safety benefit from the BA9 DCS. And now to quote Wallace Simpson, who did get an English king to abdicate on her um, request, she said, you can never be too thin or too rich. And so it's a pleasure to um, let now uh, Franz Eberle tell you about the Cobalt Chrome Biofreedom uh, stent. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Philips. On behalf of the Leaders Free investigators, it's my pleasure to present to you the Leaders Free trial results. So, this Leaders Free 3 trial was designed to evaluate the new 83 micron copper chromium biolumis A9 coated stent. It was compared to the Leaders Free trial. The two groups, the drug coated stent of leaders free and the bare metal stent of leaders free, and, the, and it was conducted in Switzerland and France. The primary safety endpoints and the primary efficacy endpoints were the same as in the leaders free trials. The inclusion criteria were again the same, and as you can see, these three cohorts, the leaders free three study group, compared to the dark coated stent of liters free and the bare metal stent group of liters free were quite similar um, with respect to the high bleeding risks. Before I show you the results, I wanted to show you a typical case that was included in this liters free three trial. This was a 77 year old female with stable coronary angina. The stress MRI showed ischemia in the basal and midventricle infralateral wall. Her past medical history was noteworthy for bilateral pulmonary emboli that necessitated chronic anticoagulation. In addition, she has diabetes mellitus, chronic renal insufficiency, and a history of stroke about one year ago. Her angiogram is shown here, and it shows this bifurcation lesion in the right coronary artery and this chronically occluded costolateral branch of the circumflex artery. So we have high grade, grade stenosis in the Crookes cortis of the RCA and a chronic total occlusion of the postlateral branch of the circumflex. She has a high bleeding risk and was enrolled in the leaders free to retire. The plan was to treat the RCA and the CTO at the same time. The RCA was treated with predilatation and then a biofreedom 3.5 times 18 millimeter stent was included and post dilated. For the CTO, the plan was to do a wire based anti-grade dissection re entry technique. Several guide wires were used, and you can see here we were successful in getting to the distal vessel. The pre dilatation caused extensive um, this dissection in the postolateral branch. Nevertheless, we advanced with stenting and we put a biofreedom 2.5 times 29 millimeter in the distal part of the vessel and the 3.0 times 19 millimeter stent in the proximal part of the vessel. After extensive post dilatation with a 3.0 of a high pressure balloon, we had an excellent result in this postolateral branch. The hospital course was uneventful, 
Um, I wanted to mention that the total stent length of this thin stud coupled chromium dracoat is sent for 62 millimeters. The troponin did not increase, and she on follow-up, she had no more angina, and over the 12 months course, no events occurred. Now we come back to the trial, and as you can see, with respect, with respect to baseline characteristics, we did very well um, with um, age, gender, and cardiovascular risk factors. There were somewhat fewer patients with STEMI, fewer patients with prior MI, and cabbage and congestive heart failure included in the leaders free three trial than in the leaders free trial. With respect to procedural characteristics, you can appreciate that the mean stent diameter was somewhat smaller in the leaders free than in the leaders free in the leaders free three study than in the leaders free, and, and the total stent length was somewhat longer in the leaders free three than in the leaders free study. But these differences did not reach statistical significance. These are now the results. You may appreciate that the primary safety endpoint was reached. The leaders free 3 um, coupled chromium stent group was non-inferior to the stainless steel stent group of leaders. The numbers are 8.0% and 9.2% for the primary safety endpoint that is a composite of death, MI, and stent thrombosis. And the clinical driven TLR, our efficacy endpoint, was reached too. The drug coated coupled chromium stent was superior to the bare metal stent of the leaders free trial. The numbers are 4.2 versus 9.3%. In order to get rid of the differences in the baseline characteristic, we also did a comparison of, uh, pro of propensity matched cohorts. And as you can see, the propensity matched cohort analysis confirmed the results of the overall comparison. The primary, in the primary efficacy end, a primary safety endpoint, the duct coated coupled chromium stent was non inferior to the stainless steel coupled duct coated stent. Similarly, stent thrombosis rate was 1.0 in the bleeders free trial and 1.8 with the stainless steel in the bleeders trial confirming the non-inferiority of the cobalt chromium thin stud stent compared to the stainless steel stent. Again, the primary safety endpoint was also confirmed um, in, the in the comparison of the propensity matched cohorts. The cobalt chromium duct coated stent was superior to the bare metal stent. And in conclusion, the new thin stud Drug-coated cobalt chromium stent was non-inferior to the stainless steel drug-coated stent in safety and superior to the BMS in efficacy. And these results confirm the good outcome of high bleeding risk patients treated with Biolimus A9 drug-coated stents, followed by one month of DAPT. I thank you for your attention. So, Philippe and Franz, thank you both for your excellent presentations. Uh, the Leaders Free 3 trial will be a late breaking clinical trial presentation at uh, the PCR e course on the 27th of June. The take home messages from this webinar are that high bleeding risk patients undergoing PCI require a special consideration of both stent choice and DAPT regime. The polymer free biolimus coated stent used with one month of DAPT has excellent outcomes in these patients. The new Thinstruck Cobalt Chromium platform, the BioFreedom Ultra, provides further improvements in both acute performance and outcomes. And this device will, be, will hopefully be CE marked by the end of June 2020 and thereafter available for clinicians to use. Thank you very much.